portrait of myself as my father was an idea that was gnawing at me uh, for a very, very long time, I would say, perhaps my entire life. So the occasion of making it um, from 2012 onwards to sort of the international premiere of the American version in 2016 um, was a, a condensation of a lifetime uh, of questions about my father, Webster, Banabas Chibamiri, and also about the, the state of masculinity and fatherhood for those families or for those generations that were directly uh, part of the colonial uh, project and in Zimbabwe that happened from 1890 to 1980. <clears throat> So there are, exist three versions of this work, one that was made in Zimbabwe with a Zimbabwean cast, the Tumbuka Dance Company, in 2012, another that was made in Japan with uh, uh, Japanese um, uh, dancers in uh, Kyoto, and the one that you are looking at the, uh, that was made in America with a cast of myself, Shama Wat, and Kaolak Papa Ibrahim and Jai, one Senegalese, one Jamaican American, and myself. Um, so the the provenance of this work is 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 fairly long, uh, fairly uh, deep. Um, <clears throat> so that is about the history uh, of the work, and it premiered uh, the American version of the work premiered um, in the USA in twenty sixteen. Hi everyone, um, welcome to Dance Umbrella's Choreographer's Cup. Um, it's absolutely a pleasure to be here with you this year in a digital space as well as live in person as part of Dance Umbrella International Festival 2021. My name is Freddie Pokrade, Artistic Director and Chief Executive of the Festival. And it gives me absolute pleasure to welcome <coughs> Nora Chikamiri to join us for this edition of Choreographer's Cup. Um, I think she'll let us know which city she's in right now, because I'm not sure which city she's in right now, but absolutely <laughs> phenomenal choreographer, um, originating from southern Rhodesia, where um, practice that's traveled all over the world, multiple award-winning artists, international award-winning across many, many practices and platforms as well, presented hugely internationally and they've been a big fan of running the work. This work we're about to see, I have not previously seen live, but I've seen other works, but it just gives a flavor of exactly the wonderful practice that Nora does. So Nora, welcome to your choreographer's cut. Thank you, and I apologize for uh, coughing. I had a long day of singing already today. Um, I'm in Berlin uh, at the moment. Yes, Berlin, Germany. Cool, thank you. So the work we'll be looking at today is portrait of myself as my father. And uh, we'll be looking at four sections of the work, um, which, as I've said at the beginning, gives us, for me, it gives us a flavor and the sensibility and the depth and the breadth of your practice um, for all in this piece. And I know it'd be great to hear your thoughts about it and where it sits, because it's a work that you've done a little while back and there's previous works that I've seen, mo most recently I've seen works, um, including hashtag punk and all these other works. So it's just good to know where this work sits um, so we're going to dive straight in and then we'll just talk and just feed into it. So the section we're going to look at is literally the beginning of the work where the audience is coming into the space and you talk about this practice of liveliness of your work and it would just be great to just hear more about that as we're looking at this section. So this mm. one was shot literally five years ago. Yes. Yeah, um, so while well, it's uh, uh, rolling in, um, I think the, the, the video, uh, one of the disadvantages of uh, seeing and talking about a work that has been uh, recorded is that you miss uh, the liveness of being in the room. Uh, the entrance of, uh, uh, into this work was something that I thought about deeply, which is um, there's only one way into the theater, even though you sit around uh, four-sided sitting, but there's only one way and it's very narrow. 
and it's lit uh, by this work light which blind uh, the public as they're coming in uh, and silhouette me. Uh, so I, I, I look extremely huge <laughs> and uh, confronting, um, foreboding, and I have this towel over my head, you know, like a boxer, you know, about ready to go down from the green room to, to the fight. Um, so you, you know, so you, you're looking at me minutes after the people have got in, and 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 that moment has passed of the confrontation of them trying to get past me. So already engaging in, in, in you know, I am here and you are here. You know, physically here. Um, you know, and it, it, it is not an, uh, a dramatization. It is not a dramatization in the sense of, you know, this is a dramatization, don't do this, don't do this at home, you know, kind of thing. This is real, this is happening in real time. We are in this room together. You have to get past me to get to your feet. And by the time you get to your feet, you already know that you're in a situation that is going to be um, testy, uh, awkward, <laughs> and demanding of attention. Yeah. Okay. So. Totally. Yeah. And I thought you, you definitely get that as we go along. And this idea of engaging with the audience, with the physicality, as well as um, I, I think there's a bit where you say switch off your phones, <laughs> which people you're looking at people like literally I'm not I'm not telling you, you should switch off your phone. You have to you know. Yeah. Yes, ab absolutely. You know, so 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 that the the uh, the reverence between performer and audience is something that I do away with. Uh, you know, traditional uh, Western theatre, if I may say, um, is steeped in this uh, awkwardness that the audience know how to behave, which is to just look and observe, and the performer knows what to do, which is to just execute what they have practiced for a long time. And the two just somehow are talking over each other's head or do not move. So, you know, uh, uh, in my work, I think um, some of the education towards life is seeing real people. And because real people see me. So if I see you on the phone, I'm like, oh, so what's what's going on on the phone? <laughs> you know, even though you're taking a picture of me, which is also quite typical, that people want to document for themselves what they're looking at, especially in uh, in these days of endless social media. So of course I tell them why well, I can take my picture and you will repost it, maybe you owe me money, la la la, <laughs> you know, what about all these rights? and negotiating uh, uh, of a photograph being taken, who has given you permission to take my image, you know, et cetera, et cetera. Um, those, are, those are some of the things that are happening in the, in the space. Yeah. And actually, is that, I mean, one thing I really love about the practice and the work I see is that composition. And I know this thing about choreography, we're going to talk about being a choreographer. is something that I know you really, um, really go deep into in your practice as well. How do you negotiate the physicality as well as the verbal language that goes, is like the verse and chorus of that. Is that something that's structured or is it a score? Yeah, how do you play with that? Because you can see that, that there's the language as well as the physical as well as the verbal language. How do you negotiate that? Is that improbable? Well, the, yeah. the, the text is something that I work on, uh, uh, I would say rather recklessly. <laughs> I, would, I, I wouldn't say that I'm, you know, like deep in thought for months on it uh, about, you know, words, but words um, are important. Uh, you know, and, and I like to have a, some kind of reckless attitude towards the English language. Uh, to me, the English language is kind of a war trophy. Uh, so, you know, uh, and I know that your public watching this will uh, maybe feel some kind of way about it. But uh, being from Zimbabwe, you know, and having been forced to learn and speak uh, the Queen's language, uh, to me, I, I kind of have um, an irreverence towards it. Uh, I'm not perfect at it, 
Uh, so I, I work with it from that understanding of uh, it is a colonial language. It is something that was imposed on me. And so forgive me if I get it wrong, but that's just kind of how it goes. So I, I, I put together texts that seem to me to have kinesthetic energy, uh, physical, that, that, that kind of rebound, that, 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 that speak in a way, you know, when you say them, uh, they, 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 they move the air in the space, um, you know, which is also a dance that we do every day with language. You know, you, see, you think of the dance as, as a physical embodiment of something. I think of dance as, um, um, as, as, as the way we speak uh, as well. So text is always written and memorized. And then the delivery of the text is determined each day by how the space feels like, how hot, how cold is the space. You know, you can deliver one word a thousand different ways, but that has to do with also the space and that has to do with the public, that has to do with the fellow performers, um, you know, in the room with you. So none of this uh, kind of uh, traditional also deliver this takes this way. You are living in this moment. So speak as you feel this moment. Um, but uh, but the, the, the text is not improvised, even though um, part of the liveness of the work is also this feeling that everything is being made up in the moment, but nothing is. You know, we work, uh, my team and I, my practice is to work uh, deep and long to the point where you are free. Nice. Yeah, and actually this leads us perfectly to the next clip, which we come to the, I mean, uh, there's the text bit where we go into the African James Bond and the African Digital Jogba, which I know is not just off the cuff, because it really plays into the physical language that manifests from there. So if we could just look at that section as well and then yeah, just share the language, where the language and the physicality really sits within that. And actually there's several tongues being spoken there as well, which would be great to hear a bit more about how that sits with the physicality as well. Well, uh, I mean, absolutely with, uh, um, with the physicality, if I may also just say uh, outside of the text, uh, look, I'm dressed um, as some kind of uh, uh, composition between an American football player <laughs> uh, and a super, uh, you know, I've got these beautiful pants from uh, Comme de Garçons or Yoji Yamamoto, and I've got all these draperies that are green, green, that are belts, uh, but are also absolutely gorgeous, that they, they look like a high fashion. Um, uh, and uh, my co-performer, Kaulak, is dressed as, as a wrestler as a, a, a Senegalese uh, a wrestler, a traditional uh, a wrestler. So all, all these elements already address a physical space, sports. Um, yeah, my, uh, uh, the, the outside um, guy, Shema Wayne Watt, is both the referee, the coach, uh, the cheerleader, <laughs> the MC, he's, he's, yep. he has a uh, tail coat. Um, that he is um, uh, wearing that also address that kind of a formal uh, yeah. gathering kind of kind of a, a kind of a space. So um, yeah, uh, 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 what what else can I say? The physicality it's it's you know we're conjuring up uh, sports heroes, sports heroes in the in the wider African world. Um, you know, 007, Af African James Bond. So that's kind of a dream uh, and a thought and a quotation to also Fali Buba, the great Congolese, <laughs> you know, because uh, he also conjured up uh, um, this, this thought. So part of what's happening is quotation upon, upon quotation, or perhaps another way to think of it is a citation upon citation. You know, I'm talking about Didier Drogba as an Ivory Coast a football player. Uh, he was, uh, uh, you know, super, super important, as was Yaya Toure, uh, you know, about the same, the same, the same uh, uh, time frame. 
you know, this uh, in the sports arena, uh, it seems to me that the African imagination soars and holds its space uh, without apology, uh, without having to contest for the right to be human. And this is also why the physical space that we're in is a boxing ring. Because it seems to me that not only through sports, but the blood sport of uh, uh, boxing has also been the space where, you know, boys become men and men write their own biography. You know, you, know, you, you say who you are uh, in that space and time. So does that, I mean, that kind of feeds more, you can tell me into that idea of portrait of myself as my father. Is that that space of becoming that? From yes, and using that the sports time? as a space where you can uh, make yourself, you can build yourself. Um, and again, I am, I am uh, building an image out of a colonial space where you know, a body that has been colonized, that has been taken over, has never had the right to make itself or to decide for itself what it is and what it can be. But in the sports place, it seems like it's working sports, or whether it's football, uh, basketball, boxing, uh, track and field, they are working outside of the general um, frame. So in that space, I can construct for myself an image of a father or image of my father as I would have wanted him to be. And what I also think he would have appreciated being and not just a colonial subject um, at the mercy and all kinds of uh, you know um, laws that were both demeaning, humiliating, befuddling, and also uh, uh, outright illegal. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I totally get that. And actually something in that language with the foot and the continuous kind of steps that comes from that. I mean, I kind of see it as a, actually, you know, I want you to describe the physicality of those steps in that section we call like, and what is, what is the juxt juxtaposition of that physical language as well as trying to be that physical language where it's trying to be a man kind of is contradictory for me. So how does that sit for you? So, so, so um, uh, the, 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 the dress that Karlak has of the wrestler, um, I'm also working with the assumption that if you understand uh, this wrestling uh, universe, particularly the West African wrestling universe mm -hmm. and the kind of rituals that um, uh, uh, go on before, during, and after, as as the fighter is uh, or the wrestler is preparing uh, for the fight. Uh, basically, the wrestler has to transform into a lion, right. and and Kaulak transforms into a lion uh, because totemically he's also a lion. Totemically, I am also a lion, which means my father is a lion. So some of those gestures of opening the space and, and, and washing the body are, are, are exactly that, prowling like a cat, or a big cat, the lion, preparing, washing the body, making it invincible, <laughs> but also opening a way to cut through, to slice through, so the gestures of cutting through the space, and also the stamping of the ground, which is um, uh, uh, an acknowledgement of the ancestors being uh, uh, woken up. As soon as you strike the ground, you're opening up the ground so that the ancestors are walking with you, which, you know, and, you know, I'm an animist, my entire team is animist. We believe that we have to strike the ground and the ancestors are with us. So this leads us once again perfectly into the next section. So this idea of um, colonialism and the uh, African um, finding yourself, what is an African? And then suddenly we go into this next section, which comes into hip hop. And there's another ju juxtaposition. Shall we watch this bit? And then we can talk about it. I think this bit, we're just going to watch it. And then I really want to 
go into a okay. section completely, cool. please. Yep. The question is, how to become really, really black? Step one, learn how to dance like a black man. Step two, right foot forward. Step three, dip, lean to the left. Step four, nod your head. Step five, cock your head, the other head. Step six, add a little finger snap. Ah, now you're close to dancing like a black man. Swing your hips, side to side to side. Step eight, show off your other head. Step nine, add a little Step 10, your face should stay cool, like if it's not a mask. <laughs> Love this image. <laughs> and now you're ready for the survival mode. So this bit before the roots crew kick in, or which they have just now. So this yeah. bit I called it the steps. And already the first time I was watching this, I was going, Oh, this is like an instruction of how to move, but at the same time, it's not for the movers, it's for us to learn the way of a culture. How yeah, what was the processing yeah, putting this together. I mean, what is that? Like the manual, like the IKEA manual, what is it? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, you know, it seems like outside of the black world, people are kind of always confounded by blackness. Uh, you know, so, and, 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 and also there, are, there is a long history uh, of anthropology and all kinds of other academic practices that have ventured uh, out into, you know, the unknown or so-called lesser known worlds to try and uh, analyze them and kind of describe them uh, to the European world, particularly. Mm -hmm. um, you know, so I was taking this position also of like, I am going to um, play a little bit of an ethnographer, but an ethnographer of uh, psychology which is, um, you know, the art of beauty, if you, if you, if you ask me, um, uh, steeped in uh, Congolese culture, mm -hmm. you know, of uh, uh, dressing uh, and addressing the body as the only kind of house that uh, one, one should care about um, and, and, and give uh, 10 points for how one could become uh, a person through beauty uh, by, 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 you know, understanding these rules of beauty. Um, yeah, so that, that it is a, a kind of manual that is both a critique of uh, the uh, traditions of anthropology, but it is also using um, this critique as a way to allow 
people to see what what I think is kind of known inside of uh, uh, the black world. Like, you know, you have to have swag, you have to have rhythm. <laughs> which you but, can you see. Know, <laughs> yeah, which you can see on her. <laughs> Beauty is conjured up in rhythm. It's not simply about, you know, whether your nose looks a certain way or something. But if you're of uh, perfect time and rhythm is time, that is considered beautiful. Um, yeah, and I was also, and why are they 10 points? There are 10 points um, um, because Robert Ferris Thompson, uh, who is a scholar that, uh, many people like to quote, uh, you know, gave us 10 aesthetics of the cool, um, you know, and, and, and I was like 10, only 10, really? Yeah. <laughs> you know, in, in talking about uh, Yoruba art um, uh, and the tenants that make uh, an object, uh, an art, uh, an art object in the Yoruba culture, but then he identified 10. So, you know, for, uh, it's, it's my constant uh, challenge to, to kind of confront that, like only 10, you know, why, why only 10? Is that, does that have to do with the 10 commandments, perhaps? <laughs> yep, <laughs> yeah, maybe. Yeah. And how, I mean, with the roots in that juxtaposition as well, I just want you to, um, yeah, what is the process in literary going, these steps are going to sit with the roots crew? For me, it's the, I mean, I see the, African classical language <laughs> as the classical form of what we have the modern version of in contemporary dance or of what is hip hop music and the tradition. Is that something you prescribe to or something that you're aware of? Or is it this language is the same thing for me? The sound, the music from what we had at the beginning with the, how would you say, Congolese sound, all those yeah, things? Yeah, 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 yeah. Is that uh, the same world the you're trying to create? Do you feel that's the same world? Well, we are living in the same world. You know, the Congolese rumba is happening simultaneously as the as the hip hop. You know, it's 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 uh, the separation is, um, is 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 a difference without. Let's let's say a separation without difference. Let's say, you know. Um, what do you mean? What do you, you mean know? by that? Uh, well, you know, I mean, you could think of them as different sounds. Uh, hip hop and the rumba Congolese, I think of them as sounds that emanate from an urban space. Cool. Beautiful. You know, that describe urban existence. Um, you know, so, so to me, they are addressing the same kind of uh, energy, but using the language of that region. Yeah. You know, and they're both black. Clear, very clear. <laughs> All right, yeah. we're going to go to the last part, which is this bit of the prepare the champion, I call it, shows yeah. what you got. And I think this kind of manifests in all the places we've been before, the idea of the liveness. Yeah, let's watch this bit. And the humor as well. <laughs> There's something really beautiful that you mentioned about the rhythm, because the way the spectator also caught on to the rhythm, the, the spectator became a bit more beautiful for me <laughs> at that moment, like the caught on, <laughs> we, we were in it together. And that was something, yeah, and I think I get that from what you said as well, that sense of rhythm and people catching the rhythm or being with the rhythm and being on time. And I know that's something that's very, um, yeah, it's just very present in your work. And that was very beautifully executed. And that whole idea of the liveliness as well. Um, yeah, time is important. Time is important. And also showing off, 
I mean, that's something that uh, uh, the showmanship is something that I think within our own circles we're doing all the time. Um, almost like verbally hazing each other uh, as a way to also play with language and to develop uh, the vocabulary. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, so, 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 so yeah. there's that as well that we are doing in challenging each other, uh, but also anytime you get up, you have to uh, show a gesture that is going to make the other one feel like, oh no, I've got to jump up and do something greater than that. Yeah. I mean, and, and which African household doesn't have that as kids? You know, you kind of like, you know, your little brother did something and now you you have to do better, um, you know? So it's most playful, but in a way it helps develop a certain kind of skill also and create thick skin um, you know, in, 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 in situations. So yeah, that, that's, 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 that's what's happening there. And also if you notice that the organization of the space, we are all uh, kind of addressing our own um, uh, uh, corners, our, our own journeys where, you know, the confrontation is never to each other. It's with an unseen, unknown uh, uh, opponent. And I really like that, you know, because there's so much about, you know, um, to do so much to do about black on black violence. Uh, and this is just kind of like, yo, we're facing uh, 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 um, challenges that are unknown. Yeah. <laughs> Anywhere we go, you know, sometimes with the support. Yeah, and this I'm like, yeah, I'm gonna Bruce Lee this sucker. <laughs> <laughs> so actually it's a you come back to that thing that i think was said previously it's a survival yeah uh, yeah bring in bring in everything i think if there's anything to be said about the colonized body is that we have acquired other skills that we may have not otherwise acquired <laughs> <laughs> along the way <laughs> yes Oh. So everything by any means necessary, yeah. And uh, yeah, there's so much joy, there's so much love in this work. Obviously the work is, uh, is, uh, is conjuring up of, uh, of my father, but of, of, uh, of uh, masculinity, of fatherhood, you know, um, yeah. And, and that's, that is done with uh, uh, humor, uh, but coming from a place of uh, a really deep love and respect. Beautiful. And actually, it does remind me because I mean, my mum and dad moved from Ghana to here to inquire, what's it, economic migrants. And actually, they would, they would have their evenings where they would invite their friends or to East London. And my dad would be bus. I remember seven, just seeing them, like the little steps you randomly come out with to music that I'm like, this is not working, but the rhythm really held. And he was looking and going, yeah, there is something innately present. Is that youthful thing as well? You talk about a boxer becoming like the man or growing up, but actually you can also see that. Um, the reverse. Yeah, the, the reverse as well. And I'm like, oh, my dad's playful in that way. And actually that's something I really felt in a champion, a champion, especially when you go to, what's it, um, Shamar? Shut up. <laughs> you know, it gets to the point where the hype has been hyped so much that you kind of have to go bring everything back down. Yeah, exactly. That's, and that's exactly. Playfulness. I mean, how do you go just briefly, how do you go into that process to try and build to that space and then bring it back down, knowing that how how far can we push it? Is that something that you really, I mean, I know you're very diligent with the <laughs> comp compositional well, structure, but how far can you push? Uh, um, I don't think you can ever push far enough. Uh, you know, I, I, I think in real life, we go further, um, you know, which is back again to the question of liveness. Uh, what I'm attempting to do is to live uh, uh, the act, the life event, as if I'm living any other day, any other moment. Uh, you know, but one, of course, can't ever forget that there is a paying audience and people have gotten a ticket and that you're in a special venue for this. Uh, but the challenge is to try and go as far as possible and dare 
as much as possible, as much as, you know, when you live in New York City every day on the subway, you see some very extreme <laughs> human <laughs> event unfold. I think, I think all these sort of um, spaces that hold life events are attempting uh, to re reimagine what happens in subways, what happens at bus stops, what happens in the park, um, you know, in the football field. So my work remains how to bring that uh, liveness, uh, that intuition uh, into uh, the, the space of a live event. Um, yeah, without, without too much censorship. That's a beautiful place to just end this. And I mean, it's an absolute pleasure to just be in conversation with you going forever. And I know this is a little taste of Dance Umbrella and international audience work in this conversation to date. And I know the conversation, this is only the beginning. It's been an absolute pleasure, Nora, hearing about your practice and especially using the portrait of myself as my father. And honestly, it's absolute, yeah, the work inspires and it completely the balance between diligence of really complex things we're dealing with as well as the humor in it is really beautiful and it's just beautifully crafted whatever way you put it as choreography compositional yeah it definitely moves us inside and out so thank you for that and thank you i thank you freddie for the beautiful questions uh and this moment to share a work that was um really important and remains important to me for the comradeship with Ashima and Kaula, who are brothers and friends uh, for life, uh, that we lived uh, so much joy through this work all over <laughs> the world. Uh, and I'm grateful to um, be able to speak a little bit to it uh, at this time. And um, I, I thank you for having me on this choreographer's card. Thank you, Nora. Hopefully, Thank I'll see you in person very soon. Lots of love. <laughs>